This is John W. Whitehead, author of A Government of Wolves, the Emerging American Police State, bringing you a message about the state of our nation. Each and every day, I can either get letters, emails from people around the world. These are ex-Americans who have left the country because they fear what's coming. They see a semi-Nazi state, some of them are telling me. Something like the Soviet Union. In fact, I had an NSA agent, a long time NSA agent, say, John, we're following the Soviet model. We're moving into kind of the Soviet regime. Remember under Stalin and people like that, things were horrible. So they fled the country. And they're encouraging other people to leave the country. So there are a lot of bad signs in America. I want to talk about those first, and then maybe talk about why I'm going to stay in America and why I'm not going to flee. The militarized police is definitely a warning. Police now have uh, stockpiled weapons. The, the smallest police force in America, in my opinion, can put down an armed revolt. That's why I tell people, if you want to get your guns and go fight the police of the day, and some people say they want to do that, you're going to get gunned down. I mean, they have tanks, sniper rifles, all kinds of devices. There are 80,000 SWAT team raids occurring across America annually. But what, SWAT team raids? 80% of these SWAT team raids are from mere warrant service where a policeman used to show up at your door and go, knock, knock, are you Mr. Smith? Now they're crashing through the doors in the middle of the night, shooting dogs, killing babies, shooting kids, killing uh, uh, citizens in this country, veterans who don't even know who's coming through the door in the middle of the night. Many times they're at the wrong place. Amidst all this stuff, Crime is at a 40-year low in America. Unarmed policemen getting shot in the line of duty is at a 50-year low. So wow, the guns, the bombs, the SWAT team raids. The NSA, the CIA, all of them are reading all of our emails, our text messages. The NSA admits to downloading, what, 250 text messages a day of American citizens? Well, you know our Fourth Amendment, our founding fathers said, hey, you're not supposed to do the surveillance on American citizens. You're not supposed to touch an American citizen unless you have a warrant, unless you have probable cause or up to some kind of activity. So the government's already trashed. They've totally trashed the thing that stands between us and a police state. Our Fourth Amendment. They know everything about us. Our electronic records, what you buy. The Depart Department of Defense now adm it admits this, that they can go back six months and, and retrieve your erased emails, phone calls, or whatever. Nothing is safe anymore. Everything is collected in, in an intelligence cloud built by Amazon, by the way, the big corporation for all the intelligence agencies. So anything you've done electronically on the internet, banking, they know exactly what you're doing and who you are. The local police have stingray devices in their cars. They drive by your home, they download all your Wi-Fi. What you're doing on your Wi-Fi, your emails, your text messages. They have all kinds of devices, to name another one, a new laser device developed by the military, given to them, by the way, by our friendly Department of Homeland Security, which when you're driving down the road, they shoot inside your car, they can tell if you're smoking marijuana maybe, or some other device they don't like, or they smell uh, alcohol. They sh then uh, radio ahead, and what happens? The police pull you over. Now, what, what is that? If you're thinking an American, you know your Fourth Amendment, they've done a search of your car, again, without probable cause. But they have all these devices. They know everything. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, has a long history of investigating people. Remember, they collected 17,000 pages of information on Martin Luther King to discredit the great protester, who, by the way, changed the face of this country for the better. If it had been for the FBI, if they could have stopped him, Martin Luther King would have done what he'd done. Uh, we know now the FBI, we have cases at the Brother Institute. They're harassing veterans who do Facebook posts. They show up at their door the next day and want an interview. They intimidate them. They actually read their text messages, read the text messages of free speech protesters. And before the marches, they go in. The FBI knock on the door and do an investigation to intimidate them. And a lot of free speech protesters at that point decide not to show up. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I write about these issues all the time. I have books, a book called The Government of Wolves, which has got a lot of this information in it, and trying to alert American citizens about what's going on. If you read what's really going on, if you wake up, if you open your eyes, you will see we're dealing with a pathological government, very similar to governments in the past that have done some really awful things. And again, I go back to the Nazis, the Soviet Union, what happened in China, and what's happening in some countries today across the world, and what's happening inside of America. And it's frightening.
So what we're dealing with again is a pathological government that's out of control. The same kind of government that a great, a great man named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, if you've never heard of Bonhoeffer, you should look him up and read about him. He was a German pastor. He saw the bad things happening in Germany. He was offered to actually go to other countries and escape in the 1940s. He actually came to America and was doing some teaching. He could have stayed here, but what did Bonhoeffer do? He saw what the Germans were doing. He said, I am not gonna stand for this. I'm gonna go back to my country and I'm gonna try to make it a better place. He tried to help the Jews who were being rounded up by the Nazis, the asocials, other people, the non-Jews, and all the people that the Nazis didn't like. What, what was an asocial? It's someone who stood up for free speech. They put him in concentration camps. Well, Bonhoeffer went back. He fought. The reason we remember Bonhoeffer today is because of what he did. And what did Hitler do? He paid him back. He put him in a concentration camp. He put him in a prison and executed him. For what? Trying to help people in need. So, what do you do if you're a great American? Do you run off to a foreign country? Do you go hide under the blanket? Do you close your eyes to all the things that are happening? Do you say, I'm not going to... I'm going to watch TV and I'm going to relax. And the average American watches 150 hours of television a month. If you're watching, you're not doing. So do you want to wake up? Do you want to do something? Do you want to be like the great patriots in our country? The patriots who stood by uh, the great ideals of America when the British were tearing America down, establishing their empire. People who stood up, the people who wrote our Constitution, the people who gave us our freedoms. People like Patrick Henry. What did he have to say in the face of crisis? Was he going to run away? Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? If, is life so dear, or peace so sweet, as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, Give me liberty or give me death. For more information on the Rutherford Institute, visit us at www.rutherford.org.